slow puncture, thankfully, and not one that destroyed the tire and then the car, as you've seen so often in the past when, when these tires let go. It, but it did let us get back round to the pits and change the tires. What caused this slow puncture? Well, we don't know for sure. All we can tell you is that there was debris on the track as a result of Aitken's crash. Maybe he picked up a small shard of carbon splinter from that incident. And we also know that in getting past all the people that he was overtaking, on this twisty section of the track, the middle section, he's got the inside. He was having to take some fairly aggressive lines over curbs uh, in order to muscle his way by. Welcome to another episode of A Conspiracy, the series where I take a look at Formula One conspiracy theories and urban legends. It's been a while, but this is one that's been highly requested. It's not one that I personally believe, but it's pretty fun nonetheless. And it's quite recent. The reality of George Russell racing in a Mercedes was an exciting prospect, which we all knew would eventually happen. But the circumstances surrounding the whole thing were quite extraordinary. In this video, I'm going to take you through the events that led up to George Russell's Mercedes drive and the pit stop in question, which raised a few eyebrows. Just keep in mind that these videos are for fun, they're not to be taken seriously. So with that, let's get into the video. On the 1st of December 2020, towards the end of a dominant season, Lewis Hamilton tested positive to a certain illness. This was quite a big story, as Lewis is the biggest name in Formula 1, fresh off his 7th World Championship and driving one of the best Formula 1 cars ever built by legendary team Mercedes. This news instantly sent the Formula 1 world wild, with fans, drivers, journalists and teams wondering who would replace Lewis Hamilton for the upcoming Sakia Grand Prix. When you're involved with the Formula 1 world on social media, whether it be Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, whatever, this was news that really sent it into a spin, almost. I mean, the first thing that was on most people's minds was, uh, let's hope Lewis Hamilton's okay and that he recovers well and he's safe and things like that. But there was still the question about a seat that needed to be filled. There were two drivers in particular who were the front runners to replace Lewis. There was Stoffel Van Dorn, former McLaren F1 driver and Mercedes Formula 1 test driver, who was also a Mercedes Formula E driver. Stoffel was a very likely option, after all, he is the reserve driver, and it's him that steps up if needed. Stoffel was also scheduled to be in Bahrain at the time, so it was very reasonable to think that Stoffel Van Dorn would be driving that Mercedes in Sakia. But there was someone else, George Russell, Williams driver and an exciting talent who is backed by Mercedes. This was the replacement majority of Formula 1 fans wanted, because it was the perfect opportunity to see what George Russell was truly made of. If he is impressing Formula 1 fans in the slowest car on the grid, what could he do in the fastest? The idea of this was quite incredible. We didn't have to wait very long though, because on the 2nd of December, George Russell was announced as Lewis Hamilton's replacement for the 2020 Sakia Grand Prix. This was the ultimate opportunity that any driver could only dream of. Finally, we would see George Russell prove himself in some quality machinery. George would go on to say, Firstly, I want to say a huge thank you to everybody at Williams for giving me this opportunity. I might be wearing a different race suit this weekend, but I'm a Williams driver and I'll be cheering my team on every step of the way. I see this as a great chance to learn from the best outfit on the grid right now and to come back as an improved driver with even more energy and experience to help push Williams further up the grid. A big thank you also to Mercedes for putting their faith in me. Obviously, nobody can replace Lewis, but I'll give it my all for the team in his absence from the moment I step in the car. Most importantly, I wish him a speedy recovery. I'm really looking forward to the opportunity and can't wait to get out on track this week. With Mercedes coming to an agreement with Williams and George set to go, it was all set up for the Sakia Grand Prix. So, let's talk about the race itself. The outer layer would be used for this race in Bahrain, which was a first for Formula 1. This was due to the double header, with the previous round being run on the Grand Prix layout that we are used to. I guess you could say we didn't exactly know what to expect, but either way, the excitement was definitely there. 
George Russell would perform well in qualifying, almost nabbing pole position from Bottas with a 53.403. George was already within touching distance of Valtteri, who had been at Mercedes since 2017. Things would get wild at the start of the race, with George Russell getting the better start and leading into turn one. This left Valtteri with the task of fending off the Red Bull of Max Verstappen and the racing point of Sergio Perez. George benefited from this, allowing him to form a gap, though an incident between Charles Leclerc and Sergio Perez would see Charles DNF and Max Verstappen DNF after parking it into the barrier. This brought out a safety car. Now I won't bore you by explaining every single moment of this race, because I know what you're here for. On lap 63, Mercedes would double stack on pit stops under a safety car. With George being the first to pit since he was leading, George's pit stop wasn't exactly the fastest, but Valtteri's was ridiculous. We'd see tyres fitted to Bottas's car before the mechanics frantically took them off and fitted a different set of tyres. This long fiasco meant Bottas lost track position and shortly after, Mercedes called George Russell back in due to a tyre mix-up. This would see George drop down to fifth, now behind Valtteri. We'd see a wonderful overtake by George on lap 70, which gave us hope that George still had it in him to charge for the win. George then passed Lance Stroll and Esteban Ocon. All that was left was the racing point of Sergio Perez. With 10 laps to go, George was closing the gap to leader Sergio Perez. It was down to just 2.3 seconds. Meanwhile, Bottas struggled on his aging tyres, dropping down to 9th on lap 79. This is where the conspiracy really begins. During lap 79, George Russell was called into the pits due to a rear left puncture meaning George Russell's chance of a win, or even a podium, was gone. A disastrous ending to what could have been a modern day sporting fairy tale. Though, we would get another fairy tale, Sergio Perez winning his first race during his final year with Racing Point, followed by Esteban Ocon and Lance Stroll, also on the podium. Now that we have some context about the race, let's get in to the conspiracy. Now this one is pretty straightforward. The theory suggests that Mercedes faked a puncture in order to save Valtteri Bottas, Lewis Hamilton, and the team from embarrassment. Stay with me here, because there are Formula One fans that genuinely believe this happened. Did Mercedes fake a puncture in order to prevent George from winning the race? Why? What is the benefit? Some believe that it would have helped Valtteri Bottas's case. After only just beating George to pole position and being jumped at the start, as well as the overtake, given George had fresher tyres, wasn't exactly the best look for Bottas. This, in a way, showed that George could jump in the car and match, if not better, Bottas, who had been at the team since 2017. This one I can sort of understand, but on the other hand, in terms of the team and Lewis, I don't see how George jumping in Lewis's car would be embarrassing. It maybe would cause some fans to further think the car is the reason for Hamilton's dominance instead of skill, but I don't see how showing the pure performance of what Mercedes are capable of building damages the team. One thing I do think about is that George didn't pick up the puncture. It was the team that brought it up and called him into the pits. This is perfectly explained though, considering the team have all the data and can diagnose the problem before the driver. This could explain why we didn't see a massive drop off in lap times. There is also a word from that race weekend that has stuck with me. Just one single word. Genuine. So a box, box. This is genuine puncture. So box, oh. box, 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 a firm. This is a genuine puncture. The inner conspiracy theorist inside of me cannot let that go. But there is the factor that George did feel the car behaving differently, but just didn't want to believe it until the team confirmed it to him. One thing I cannot deny is that if Mercedes didn't want a good result, why would they pick George Russell, a driver who has testing experience with them and was bound to do well in that car? There was nothing really to gain by compromising his Grand Prix. Surely you wouldn't work out an agreement with Williams to use one of the biggest young talents in Formula One if what you were after was just an average drive. I just can't really see this particular conspiracy theory being all that plausible. But for the second theory, one that I have inside information on, which you haven't heard. 
It wasn't George Russell in the car, but Dan Tictum, and all the team radio was pre-recorded. No, no, definitely not. Either way, the debate on whether Mercedes purposely compromised George Russell's race lives on, and many still believe it was a setup. Though Mercedes have explained the situation and have all the data, it remains a conspiracy theory. Thank you all for watching episode three of A Conspiracy. This was highly requested and it was quite fun and I uh, hope you enjoyed it. If so, please consider subscribing and hitting the notification bell so that you get notified every time I upload and you won't miss a thing. And with all that being said, thank you very much for watching.